Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Benvenuti a Gracie Mansion. Questa è la casa di tutti e siete sempre benvenuti qui. <laughs> Are you all ready to celebrate tonight? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. yeah, that's better. So you all know I'm not Italian, but I, I love the language, the art, the architecture. I love the Italian warmth and generosity and the devotion to family and friends. I love the food. Of course I love the food. Who doesn't love the food, right? And, but most of all, I'm grateful to Italy as the ancestral home of the family that gave birth to the love of my life. And you know who that is, right? <laughs> and the strong Italian women in his life who helped him become the powerful and compassionate man that he is today. Now, Bill and I have traveled to Italy several times together, and with each trip, more magical than the last. However, last year I traveled to Florence on my own and visited an amazing villa for children with mental health challenges. It was, it was beautiful, it was quite lovely with a very family-like setting, amazing design. And the children and the people there reminded me of something I think about often, and that is how mental illness affects everyone. It's part of the human condition. And it doesn't matter which side of the Atlantic Ocean you live on or which borough you live in, mental health challenges touch all of us, all of our lives in some way. And that's why it's so important that we build the systems and improve the access to the services that can help people be healthy and well. And all of you can help by spreading the word about our 24-hour free confidential mental health hotline. I'm going to share the number with you. It's 1-888-NYC-WELL. Can we say it together? 1-888-NYC-WELL. One more time. 1-888-NYC-WELL. Now, anyone who's struggling can call at any time to talk with a trained counselor. You can call for yourself. You can call for a loved one. You can call for someone that you're worried about and, and ask for, like, what can you do to help? And help is available in more than 200 languages. And yes, Italian is one of them. Can I count on you to spread the word? Yes. Can I count on you to spread the word? Yes. What's the number? Very good. You passed the test. So now it is my great pleasure to introduce my Italian teacher, and amore mio, our mayor, Phil de Blasio. Un bacio per Charlene. Buonasera a tutti. Benvenuti. Benvenuti nella Casa del Popolo. Everybody, it is such an honor to have you here, to have you here at Gracie Mansion, which is the people's house. And I want to remind you, the first person, the first mayor to recognize the people of New York City deserve this house to be part of our history, our legacy, was Fiera LaGuardia, the first occupant of this house as mayor of New York City. And I am so blessed to be one of his successors in history, but I know he was the greatest mayor we ever had, a source of such pride for all New Yorkers, but particularly for those of us blessed to be Italian-Americans, someone we have looked up to for generations, right? So he started it, and now this great tradition continues, and we're so happy to have all of you here tonight to celebrate our heritage and to celebrate that amazing contributions that Italian Americans have made to New York City and to our nation. And they are so numerous, so intense. This city, the imprint on this city, the Italian culture, the Italian nature of New York City is so strong for so many years. And look at what we have done in this city 
Look at what Italian Americans have achieved. Look at what the Italian contribution to this nation has been. It makes us proud, doesn't it? It makes us proud to think of all that has happened. I know when my grandparents came here, and some of you may remember, a few years ago I went to my grandparents' hometowns, Sant'Agata de Gotti in Provincia di Benevento and Grassano, Provincia di Matera, and I went there with Sherlane, with Chiar, with Dante. We saw our heritage, but we also saw small towns like the small towns that so many of your families came from, so far away from New York City in every way, and those brave souls, our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, came here to make a new life. Think of how difficult it was to go off to the unknown because they believed they had to do better for their families and for their future generations. And look, all of us today are the proof that they were right and what they achieved is something amazing. We are their legacy. We are their legacy. Now, I have to tell you, I, when, when I was blessed enough to meet Sherlane, I fell in love with her. I did not know at the time that she was someone who loved everything Italian. She loves the culture, she loves the food, she loves the language, as she said. And when we talked about, we had our beautiful children and we talked about names, it did not take much to convince her to name our daughter Chiara and our son Dante. And it's been very handy when we go to Italy because our children do not need to spell their names for anyone. <laughs> Here they do, but not there. So, I love this celebration because we have so much to be proud of. And we have so much to recognize. And you know, we always say this is the ultimate city of immigrants. We really are. Charlene always says, and she's right about the history, some immigrants came willingly, some did not. But any way you slice it, this is a city made great by immigrants. And Italian Americans, through such hard work, through such toil, and remember, when, when Italians came here, my, grandpa, my grandfather came here in 1905. At that time, Italians were discriminated against openly. And we all know, we all know from our family that that history went on for quite a while. My Aunt Yola passed away just last year, well into her 90s. And one of the last conversations I had with her, she talked about going to school here in New York City and coming home crying because other kids made fun of her because she had an accent, because she spoke Italian before she spoke English. And she felt ashamed. And she said my grandfather Giovanni would always say to her, she, he would go through the list of all the great things that Italians had done for the world. We'd talk about the Roman Empire, we'd talk about the Renaissance, he would talk about the contributions Italians made, and he said to her, remember one word, fieri, pride. And I heard her telling this story just last year, last year of her life, and she said it, I'm talking about decades and decades later, but she said it with such emotion in her voice like she had just experienced it yesterday. She experienced that discrimination, people who tried to take away our pride, but we all persevered. We all persevered. We know what we contributed to this city and this country. And we still fight some very unfortunate stereotypes in the media. And this is a problem that still needs to be confronted. And I have to be real about this. Because a few bad apples and a few stereotypes are put forward as opposed to the extraordinary contributions of 25 million hardworking, law-abiding Italian-Americans. We have to right that wrong, don't we? But tonight we celebrate, and this is one of the celebrations each year that everyone from our community who is in the administration loves to come to. So I want to first salute the Italian-American leaders of this administration. One I'm going to talk about later on, but let me mention some of the others who are gathered before me, uh, behind me here, I should say. First of all, he has done amazing work for this city, 
for decades. He's one of the people who keeps us safe, our fire commissioner, Dan Nigro. And a man who worked hard in service to the city for a long time and got the ultimate recognition just a few days ago when I named him our permanent commissioner for the Department of Environmental Protection, Vinny Sapienza. Everywhere you go in the city, when you see a beautiful new school or pre-K center or where our children learn and grow, that's because of Lorraine Grillo, the president of the School Construction Authority. A man who stands up for the rights and the needs of people with disabilities. He is an amazing advocate, and he has made this a fairer city for all. Commissioner of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, Victor Khaleesi. And the woman who makes sure that our seniors get the support they need, have wonderful senior centers to go to with fantastic programming so they can enjoy life more, our Commissioner for the Department for the Aging, Donna Corrado. And every time, every time there is a new city law, it's because the city council and the mayor's office got together to make that happen, I want to commend our Director for City Legislative Affairs, John Paul Lupo. And I'm going to quickly mention the Italian wannabes. They're wonderful people. They love the Italian people. They just don't get to be one, but we're going to applaud for them anyway. Our Oath Commissioner, Fidel Del Valle, our Community Affairs Commissioner, Marco Carrion, our DDC Commissioner, Ana Barrio, the Chief of Staff to the First Lady, Roxanne John, Chair of the City Planning Commission, Marissa Lago, my Senior Advisor, Gabriel Fialkoff, Deputy Chief of Staff, Rachel Lauder, and Chief of Staff, Kevin O'Brien. Let's thank the elected officials who are here, the District Attorney of the Bronx, Darcel Clark, and two council members I have served with for years. We were in the Italian American Caucus and the City Council together. They are wonderful public servants. Council Member Jimmy Vaca and Council Member Vinnie Gentili. We are blessed to have representatives of the Italian Republic here, one of whom I will introduce in a moment, but the other of whom I want to acknowledge the wonderful Consul General of Italy in New York, Francesco Guanardi. Genuardi, I'm sorry, Genuardi. Now, I want to thank also so many organizations who gathered with us to put together this wonderful event. I want to shout them out and thank them. They do so much for our community and for our city. The Italy American Chamber of Commerce, we thank you. The National Council of Columbia Associations of Civil Service. The National Organization of Italian American Women. The National Italian American Foundation. The Italian American Committee on Education. The Italian Heritage and Culture Committee of New York. La Scuola d'Italia, we thank you. And the Italian language and culture departments of a number of universities are participating this evening, including NYU, Columbia, Queens College, and Fordham. We thank you all. We thank the people who are here from the Italian Welfare League that do so much to help our seniors and our immigrants and our children. And finally, generations of service to our community from the Archdiocese of New York and the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. We thank the representatives here tonight. Let's give them a big round of applause. Now, my friends, let me just tell you quickly. I have something I want to I wanna give you, some unsolicited advice that I have learned from my own life bringing up children who are proud of their heritage. I gotta tell you, I watched when Chiara and Dante 
saw where their great-grandparents were born. They saw the house they were born in. And I know a lot of people here have gone back to your ancestral towns. I want to urge everyone, bring your children, let them see it, let them feel it, because it changes their lives. Expose them not just to our culture, not just to our food, but to the language. We have to preserve the Italian language. <laughs> now, I want you to know something, and Charlene and I are kind of shocked by this. I gave this lecture to Dante. I thought it might not work, because when a parent gives a child advice, you know what happens. But then, of his own volition, he signed up for Italian classes at Yale, and he did a summer program at the University of Siena. So he is carrying on the family tradition. <clears throat> you never know. All right, now it's time for some special guests. And my friends, everyone, I want you to listen carefully because we have a very special guest. And remember, our bond to Italy our bond to Italy is so strong, it doesn't matter if there's 3,000 miles of ocean between us. Our bond is so strong, and our countries are so close. And we remember that so deeply our debt of gratitude to our homeland. Well, tonight we are especially honored to have the leading representative of Italy here in the United States with us to, to gather with us and celebrate with us. It's my honor to bring forward the Ambassador of Italy to the United States of America, Armando Varicchio. Buonasera. Buonasera. Dear friends, cari amici, what a pleasure for me to be here. The invitation of you, Mr. Mayor, and the beautiful, gorgeous First Lady of the great city of New York. Thank you very much for having me here, and uh, grazie to all of you for attending this great event tonight. I can see white, red, and green tonight, the flag of Italian, of, uh, the colors of the Italian flag, and this working up really my heart. Uh, this appointment here in the beautiful Gracie Mansion is becoming a tradition for the city of New York. And like every tradition, is so much loved and welcome. New York, the city that we call La Grande Mela, the Big Apple, is a place where the Italian community has deep roots and where it has been key in shaping the city as we know it. Today, as it has been in the past, Italians continue to bring their skills, knowledge, and creativity to the city. And I'm proud of your many important achievements in the arts, science, at business. October, this beautiful month that, by the way, was opened yesterday by commemorating the great San Francisco, is a traditional Italian Heritage Month. When the Italian-American community gets together, remembers the past, the sacrifices and hard work of parents and grandparents, as the mayor was just reminding us, it takes pride in its contribution in building this great country. This month also we celebrate a very famous Italian, Christopher Columbus, Cristoforo Colombo. I think that Italian, Italian Americans and Americans should all be proud of this great sailor who set sail and with bravery, with the very poor technology of the time, went west to reach the east and eventually he reached these great shores. He didn't discover America. America was there, even if at those times it was known named after another great sailor from Florence, Amerigo Vespucci. But what he did was a great contribution to peace of the world, connecting two sides of the world, allowing a change of ideas, of, of, uh, uh, of trade, of uh, goods, and making the world united as we want to have it, we, because we all want the world to be united in peace and prosperity for all.
Wherever I go in the United States, every corner of this great country, I'm proud of the great contribution of the Italian community. But if there is a place that is very special, it's this very place of New York City. There is no other place in this great country where the Italian community has achieved such a tremendous achievements and results, and a long history of great mayors from Fiorello La Guardia to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, are a great confirmation. And these are all amazing achievements which are attributed in large part to steadfastness, ingenuity, and commitment of dedicated people such as you. Grazie. As the mayor was reminding very kindly, we, we have and entertain excellent relations, both at local level and globally. Our two great nations are on the front front of innovation, of prosperity, of growth. Our military stands side by side in the most difficult places of the world, united by the shared desire to bring peace and stability for all. And this is what makes Italy and the US staunchest allies. There is no other alliance as the one bringing us together. This has a long history and this has, I'm sure, a long future ahead. But again, this special relationship between our two countries would not be the same unless we could count on you, this amazing community. Because Italian Americans are instrumental in building new bridges between our two countries in all areas of business, of politics, of the economy, of science. These bridges are increasingly diverse and dynamic, and they reflect the high standards of relations between our countries, which have never been so close and intense. So, I think that this event is an important celebration for all of us, all the great organizations represented here, the great Scuola d'Italia, the great community of your colleagues, Mr. Mayor, let's celebrate tonight and we remember that we are so proud to be Italian and Italian-American, at the same time, great citizens of this beautiful nation. Grazie, enjoy the party, and we'll be seeing you soon. Ciao. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Okay, now for the big moment when we bestow an honor on a great Italian-American. And this is someone who has done so much for this city. I want to remind you that some people are called to serve and they understand they have to be ready for anything. Well, if there's someone who is ready at all times, ready for any occasion, pronto a tutto, it is Commissioner Joe Esposito. For five decades. For five decades, this man has served New York City, 44 years in the NYPD, rising to the top uniform position, chief of department. One of the leaders who saw us through 9-11, one of the leaders who saw us through Sandy when Sandy hit. And you'd think maybe after all that hard work, he could have been given a break. But no, I said, Joe, we need you again to be Commissioner for Emergency Management, and he answered the call again. <laughs> and now sometimes you turn on CNN, and Joe Esposito is the voice of New York City, showing that New York City is ready for anything. And we are so proud of what you've done. I also want to tell you, in his spare time, Joe Esposito goes to every conceivable Italian restaurant and bakery in New York City. He has been to all of them. If you ever mention, just mention a restaurant, he'll tell you what's on the menu. <laughs> if it's an Italian restaurant, he's been there. But Joe, I want to tell you, it's not just what you've done for the people of New York City. 
Because my friends, we've seen a, a really horrible tragedy unfold in Puerto Rico the last few weeks. And I want to tell you, Joe Esposito has led the way in New York City's efforts to help Puerto Rico. We've been there for Puerto Rico. And Joe Esposito is one of the reasons why. And this is a great example of what makes New York special. A proud Italian-American who's been one of the leaders of helping the island of Puerto Rico. Because we're all in this together. So, I get a special opportunity to present a proclamation now. And Joe, you've worked long and hard. You've had important titles. You may have won other awards, but you've never had a day named after you yet. So, Hold that up. This proclamation tells you about a lot of the great things about Joe Esposito, but I'm going to cut to the last line. And it says, I, Bill de Blasio, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim Thursday, October 5th, 2017, as Joseph Esposito Day in the city of New York. The people want Espo. And now you'll get him. Joe Esposito. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great honor. And thank you, Mr. Mayor and First Lady, for inviting me here uh, today for Italian Heritage Event. It's an honor to, to get this proclamation. But before I start, I have to give two shout outs. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Uh, today is the last day of work for a fellow who spent a lot of time in the NYPD, 36 years in the police department. Tonight at midnight is his last time uh, working because he's hit the mandatory age of 63. Uh, 36 years in the police department, 10 years as the liaison to emergency management. Bobby Hanischfeger, there he is right there, Bobby. 36 years. Bobby. The bad news is, this is your retirement party, okay? <laughs> and one more shout out, as, as the mayor said, uh, with his leadership, we've been going to uh, Texas and the Florida Keys, and now we're in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Isles. It's his leadership that has gotten us there, but it's the hard work of the, 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 the workers in the city of New York, but I have to point out the fellas and ladies in emergency management. Raise your hands, everybody who works in emergency management. Raise it up. Those are the folks that have been working day in, day out, providing service right now to the people in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Thank you so much. You, you, you make my job easy. Thank you. Okay, just to give a little uh, perspective on my life, God has blessed me with those of you who know uh, horse racing with the trifecta. He really has given me the trifecta. I was born in Brooklyn. That's why. I was raised a Catholic, as most Italians are, and I'm Italian. So who is better than me? It's unbelievable. God has really blessed me. He really has. And all three of those things got me to where I am today. If it was of my Catholic education, uh, my Italian family upbringing, and the fact that I lived in Brooklyn, I would not be standing here today. All of those things attributed to me getting to where I am today. God has really blessed me. I'm a proud American of Italian descent. The Italian community in New York has strong and deep roots with many inspiring Italian-American leaders, both in our past and through today. The mayor pointed out LaGuardia. I will point out Bill de Blasio as the president. Let's hear it for the mayor. And like many Italian-Americans, I'm also a proud, lifelong public servant, as the mayor pointed out. I look forward to continuing work for the people of this great city as the head of New York City Emergency Management, trying to keep New Yorkers as prepared as possible for any event in the city that may occur. Again, thank you very much for this great honor, and I'm proud to accept this proclamation. Thank you so much. Give him one more round of applause, Joe Esposito. Well, everybody, enjoy this evening. The food is going around. The wine is flowing. In vino veritas, as the Romans said. 
Enjoy each other's fellowship. It's an honor to be with you tonight. Buona festa a tutti. The only thing that could save me is just knowing you're mine. My papa told me once or twice, don't be cool, but don't be too nice, cause I want